The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 948 At least we survived. Valet swiftly winked her way back toward Generosity 2 from the hospital, starlight tucked carefully in her hooves. The cool night air whipped around her as she flew, and it was impossible to miss the bustle of activity around the laughter dorm. The building had far more lights on than normal. Stolly stirred. You are right down there? Valet asked cautiously. Mm -hmm. Stolly shifted in her grip, hooves and fore like bandaged tenderly. I can still see... Valet pulled up into a slower forward hover, holding Starlight out so they could see each other. Easy, girl. We're getting you home. Celestia showed up and cleaned up Gazelle. You're gonna be okay. Starlight started to cry. Hey, Valet held her close. If you even think about saying it's not fair, you'd win a world record for how right you are. What even happened? I thought for sure someone would have been keeping better tabs on that guy. I I don't know, Stolly sniffled. Well, you don't need to find out, Vully promised, patting her head and increasing her speed. I'll do that investigating for you. Stolly wasn't consoled. It's gonna be all right, Vully repeated. We'll get you back to Maple. Horn hurts? D did you find a sword? Stolly managed, dodging the question. The Mongolas one? I was too tired to get it. Stashed it under some junk, Valet shrugged. Gotta go back and grab it the moment I've got you home. What was it even doing there? Glimmer brought it, Stolly sniffed. I couldn't have beat him on my own. She helped. Valet's eyes narrowed slightly. She's back? She's still following us? Uh, yes. Well, hey, at least she helped out. Stolid shook her head. We need to get that sword back now. Gazelle was trying to eat cuny marks like a Shiva. He ate the meteor that we saw. It was making him stronger. I had to take them back like chrysalis. Valet frowned heavily. Is that what happened to that one mare's cuny mark? He got one? Stolid's ears pressed back miserably. Well, bananas. We need to get the sword, Stolid repeated. It's just Moonglass. She's a normal pony like Shinespark. Maybe she can just hold it to get a cutie mark back. Nope, Bully interrupted, facing her again. I got this. You did a terrific job doing something you never should have had to do. But now your friends are here and they've got your back. This isn't something you gotta do. And even if it's something you can do, I don't want you burying yourself in work or whatever. We're gonna get you home and let you let it out. For a moment, Starlight looked like she was going to struggle, but then she slumped. Thanks. Whenever I can. A few seconds passed. So, how's your horn? Valet asked. Bad, but, but I'm used to it. Starlight swallowed, hanging dizzily in Valet's hooves. Better than a panic attack with the artifice. Well, that's saying something. Valet angled into a glide, the shoreline approaching ahead. Still, though, just so you know, you stood up to a psycho. Probably saved all those kids' lives. They're okay, Stolite managed. More okay than you. Not a mare who lost her cutie mark is rough. Get the sword. Valet angled steeper. I'm taking a two-second detour to get you home. Literally. Watch. One? Air whistled around them as Valet dropped even steeper, the island whooshing up to meet them. And she pulled up just in time, swerving and landing on the roof instead of the street. Why are we up here? Starlight groggily muttered. Valet frowned and set her down. Someone left a box on our roof. She trotted forward, checked it, and popped it open, and blinked. Ah, huh. well, I guess we don't need to go back to the dorms. It was the Moonglass Sword. Attached was a little note that read, 
You're not alone. Somebody is looking out for you. Huh. Starlight just sat too dazed to properly read. Valet scratched her head. Well, I guess that punk we brought back at the Crystal Palace is helping again. Dunno who else could possibly have brought this back. She glanced sharply around. You think she's still hiding nearby? Glamour, Starlight mumbled, trying to focus on the note. Yes, but you won't be able to find her. Valet shook herself, straightening her coat. Eh, whatever. So, is this thing safe for me to actually carry? Like, normally I can touch full moon glass just fine, but if it's also sucking stuff from you-know-who, getting some inconsistency on it from my butt, too. She picked up the box with it in. Doesn't matter, just curious. Let's get inside. Inside a door, Maple was waiting like a worried tiger. Starlight, she cried, bouncing and grabbing the filly from Valet. Oh, your horn is hot. Starlight, are you all right? Uh, no. Everyone else was arrayed in the living room, wide awake, including Harshwater and Granada and Gerardo and Slipstream. Help made it in time, Jam Jars asked, sitting on an arm of the sofa. Starlight managed to meet her eyes. Thanks. Jam Jar stared at her. Normally I'd say no problem, but I don't feel like lying right here. What happened? Shinespark asked, stepping forward. Valet, what's her status? Ah, Valet scratched her head as Maple carried Starlight away. Indeterminate. No island ponies are dead yet, but apparently Gazelle went psycho and messed them up bad. Or went more psycho than he was already. What I want to know is how Celestia was here for a whole week and didn't even do anything about that clown. Anyone who has ever set hoof in the Empire could tell you he's insane. Me and Starlight even beat him up once before. Shinespark shook her head. I'll bet President Kinmari will be asking that before us. I haven't been paying as close of attention to Gazelle as I should have. She bowed, shoulders stiff. There will probably be a fight over who's responsible. Gerardo twiddled his talons. I have an unfortunate feeling such a brawl would take precedence over decisions on whether to allow the border to be opened in our name. Equestria must have some sort of government beyond Celestia. Imagine how being attacked by a foreign prince will sound. Except we were the ones who stopped him. Valet raised an eyebrow. Come on, it's gotta be worth brownie points, saving some kids from a crazy sphinx. Which could make it worse for Starlight, depending on how she feels about being a local hero. Amber glanced quietly at Gerardo. Remember when Hemlock's screen collapsed? Shinespark loudly cleared her throat. It's far from that simple. If you were a government pony with strong opinions on whether the border should be open or closed, you wouldn't care about us or Gazelle or the students. You'd care about how you could spin this to support your position. Now, if keeping the border closed is as important to Princess Celestia as she says it is, I doubt she'd even keep this on the table for government ponies to have opinions about, but it still could mean trouble for us. She glanced at everyone. I think we need to decide fast and now. Our options are to ask for the writs of harmonic sanction, then try to hide out somewhere in Equestria where no one will focus on us while this incident blows over, or else fly back to Iron Ridge and wait it out in the north. If Princess Celestia is still on our side, she could come find us again and offer whatever she wants to offer once it's safe. What about me, though? Felicity whispered. If I'm not fit to fly... And what about the ship? Valet looked sideways at her. Is it really fit to fly? Shinespark shook her head. Sometimes we have no choice but to make the impossible happen. For now, though, I want to be part of whatever meeting is going to happen between the leaders. This is a situation that could easily spin out of control the moment ponies who care more about something other than the injured students, us, and Gazelle get involved. I've seen a lot of these in my time in Anridge, and we need to go now. 
We can't trust that just because we saved lives, this will turn out favorably for us. Valet, are you with me? Yeah. Valet stashed a box with a sword and adjusted her beret. You and me, girl. Need a ride? Shinespark nodded. Thanks. Let's go. Meanwhile, Maple sat with Starlight in the dim bedroom, fussing over her. Does she need anything? Harshwater asked, peeking through the door. It looks like she's already been treated. Maple shook her head. Starlight, do you need anything? A drink, Starlight mumbled. My head hurts. Right. Harshwater backed away. Maple sighed once she was gone. It'll be okay, she whispered. It's all over now. It's never over, Starlight whined. This always happens to me. Why does this keep happening? Why do we keep having to fight things like this? Maple hung her head. Well, I don't know what to say. But Gazelle was here for us to fight now because we let him come with us instead of leaving him behind to die. Stolly slumped, spent in the blankets. Then we should have been worse ponies and not tried to help him. I don't know, Maple sighed. This happened with Crystal, too. We could have left her behind or not taken her to Isvaldi when she needed it. Maybe it's just a consequence of trying to do the right thing and help the ponies who need it most. No one ever said doing the right thing was easier. The students who got hurt don't think it's the right thing. Maple shook her head. Actually, you could have teleported away and left them to Gazelle, and you fought him and got hurt doing it instead. Saving them was harder, but I don't think they thought that was wrong of you. Stolite whimpered and curled up. I don't know why the ponies we keep staying around are the powerful ones who can do things like this, Maple continued. It's probably because we're powerful and ambitious ourselves. But I don't know what to do about that. We fought to get where we are and got this strong in the first place so that we could overcome the kinds of problems ordinary ponies face, didn't we? But all we did was trade them out for problems like these. I don't have any better answers for you, Starlight. But I know we're all still here. Whatever you had to do, it was enough. We're still alive. Starlight sniffled. Do you wish you still had the artifice? Maple asked. And your memories? Starlight adamantly shook her head. N no, I... I did do it without them. And if getting stronger just gives us worse problems, I don't want to deal with whatever they would give me. How did you do it? Maple whispered. You just tried your hardest, like always? Glimmer was back. Starlight closed her eyes. I couldn't have beat him on my own. She helped. Before Maple could reply, the door opened again, and Jamjar stepped through, a water glass held in aura. Delivery service! Thanks, Maple greeted, reaching and taking it from her and holding it up for Starlight. Starlight gratefully drank. You went and got help, she mumbled when she was done. I mean, yeah? Jamjar's brow furrowed. You think I was just going to let him do whatever he wanted without getting you some backup? Starlight tried to set the glass down, half empty, and Maple caught it before he could tip over. Thank you for that too, Maple repeated. I don't know the whole story yet, but... Well, you're welcome, Jamjor shrugged. I'm going to go back to the laughter dorms, if no one minds. I want to see if I can find that book he was reading. Gazelle was reading a book? Maple looked up. Jam just nodded. By or about some pony called Seraphim. I want to read what he read that made him go off the deep end. Good luck, Starlight mumbled, curling up harder in the blankets. I'm staying here. End of chapter 948